Um, and just to talk a bit about some of the, uh, the primary kind of, uh, or the focus on, on the trials, we're obviously looking at battery management, drivetrain, duty cycles, um, but other, other areas of interest, and I suppose it's around passenger comfort and the experience, or the, the, the travelling experience for the, for the passenger, is the build quality, um, production methods in terms of introducing lightweight uh, strategies, reducing seat um, um, uh, weights to increase passenger capacity, for example, even alloy wheels on our um, uh, inductive charge uh, Zeus uh, projects, for example, and getting uh, feedback from both the driver and engineering staff to understand where improvements can be made and what differences, or well, yeah, basically what, what improvements can be made. Um, we also look at operational and service um, information like battery charging technology, drivetrain, um, and just look at the performance of the, 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 how the, the vehicle's uh, uh, performing across those, uh, those key areas that like I've mentioned. Um, we've also got four, four routes with four different uh, charging cycles or strategies, which has been good for our own experience and, and learning, if you want, over the last couple of years. Um, there's a lot, lot of uh, information been talked about this morning already on charge infrastructure. Um, and quite interesting, to date, we haven't, or I haven't received any, any negative feedback from, from passengers, so that's, that's good news as, as, as a starter. Um, recently, we've introduced some performance data loggers on five of the buses just to um, underpin, enhance whatever the, the performance data we're getting from the vehicles on a day to day basis. Uh, we're looking at um, so the measuring uh, bus performance in real world conditions. That's that's been mentioned today, and that's that's given us quite a lot of lot of uh, useful data and information in terms of durability, reliability. Again, passenger feedback, uh, driver engineering feedback. Um, we need to understand the scalability and why the use of the electric bus on other routes. How we can s is, is scout it out and what what sort of uh, challenges face us in in that part of the journey. Excuse the pun. I understand scalability for um, wireless charging. So, like at Bristol, we have three inductive charged uh, Zeus buses operating on Route 69, uh, which is uh, uh, Cannon Town to Wolverhampton. Two charge uh, ground charging locations at each end of the route. Um, are there necessary tools to inform strategy going forward in terms of procurement, um, methodology, methodology, and framework agreements. And of course, the important thing here is around about scale, but the sustainability, as you say, of the uh, charge infrastructure. Um, so uh, we took delivery of our first two BYD buses back in uh, December 2013. Um, further, a couple of years later, or a year later, I say, it was induced by four Metro City bu bu buses in, tw in 2014. Another two uh, buses for Arriva in 2014. Uh, with another seven going into to operation in 2015. Uh, two of our buses int we, uh, was introduced to operational, uh, the operational fleet in 2015. And as I said, um, later on this year, we've got a total of 51 new uh, Envira 200 buses coming in the fleet. So hold on, 51, 17 and five, what's that in total? 78. That how many? 78. 78, is it? <coughs> Around about, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so just to give you, uh, this is just a snapshot of some performance data. As I said, we're second to the, the, the trial around the battery performance and battery chemistry and so on. We're looking at just testing some, some data loggers, for example. Uh, so we, as I said earlier, we've got five data, lo data, logger fit, uh, data loggers fitted on five vehicles. Um, so can I, just, can I test this? That's it, yeah, get my aim. <laughs> so, um, so here we've got the, uh, the consumption. Um, and if we, we've got October 2016, September 2016, um, consumption, if I, if I can start with 20 October, uh, consumption there is, on this side, is two kilowatts. So the BYD buses, double deck buses, for example, <coughs> roughly, on average, achieved uh, two kilowatt um, per mile, two, two kilowatt hour per mile. And the range on this side was, um, well, I don't know, about 12, 1,200 miles. Um, so that's, that's, so left is the overall consumption. If we take one of the, uh, let's say EMC consumption, which is a metro, an opto metro city, that'd be there. It's way down to under a kilowatt hour per mile. So that's, um, that's pretty good performance. Um, and if you look at the mileage achieved two and a half thousand miles for the month of October. 
Um, what, what, we've, what we've seen with the Opta, for example, is that on the, on the 312 route over in Croydon, uh, Opta have introduced a software upgrade which has produced, provided or produced a better performance on battery. What we're looking to do is introduce those upgrades onto the rest of the Metro City or Opta Metro City fleet to, again, improve a better range and better performance of the battery, battery technology. Uh, down here, as I mentioned um, earlier about the different <coughs> charging strategies, just to, just to give you an idea of some of the charging uh, patterns, if you want, for the different, for the three different routes. So this green one here is, is quite, a, quite a good one. I haven't put which route they belong to, just to give you an idea of how the different charging strategies and what we're learning from these different charging strategies. So it's, actually, I, I will tell you, so the, the, uh, the green is the BYD <laughs> double deck, and that's kind of pretty much flat in comparison to these Opta charging strategies. So the BYD, for example, goes out, is char charged overnight to 100%, goes out and does uh, around about eight, 80 to 90 miles on a single charge. The Opta Metro Cities um, are charged overnight and then um, around about 50 miles or so come back in for the top up charge during the afternoon. So that's, that represents that. Um, so on to the Zeus project, as I said, we've, the, the, the vehicle operates from Warm to Canyon Town. We've got the charge plates in, in the ground, 100 kilowatt chargers, um, divided by two, two coals there, there's two coals, two 50 watt coals, same on the bus. Um, the, 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 I suppose one of the challenges for, for this project, for the manufacturers, is, is, is repackaging a, a standard double dip bus to accommodate the various, or the additional equipment like the coals, the um, transponders, all, all the different uh, uh, larger batteries, and still maintain a, 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 um, a good passage capacity. So that was one of the challenges for the, the manufacturer. So here we, we've got, to, just to get, let's say, a, a, a brief oversight, we've got in June the miles, uh, and this is across all three vehicles incidentally, the average miles, so it's about 7,000 miles across the the, um, the three vehicles. Y you can see that miles actually dips down to September, and this is due to a number of different reasons. One, the vehicles running to and from Guildford for additional software upgrades and uh, reworks, um, that, that sort of stuff. We, we, unfortunately, we had some collision damage uh, issues with one of the buses, so that represents the, the dip in the miles there. But the good, the positive, there was two positive things here. One, the operational miles, that's the grey line, is now, so it took a dip there in June, July, I should say, and that's coming back up and being, it's consistent with the operational model. So that, that tells us that in terms of operational, vehicles are performing extremely well. They're at so around about 87% uh, availability, um, which, is, which is good news again. Um, it, was, it was difficult initially, um, but we, we're now, the, the, the whole project is settling down and uh, producing good results. We're operating in around about 57 or going towards 60% in EV mode. Our target is 80% EV mode. So we're not far off. Uh, there's more information to tell you about those figures in the second next slide. This is a report that TRL does for us each month, just to get, again give us an idea. So starting with the top here, we've got um, total, that's the total miles the vehicle runs and we've got operational miles here and as mentioned in the previous slide we're around about 50% EV mode. Our target as I said in terms of the deliverables for the project is 80% in EV mode. Um, we don't have any overnight charging at the moment so that makes these figures even more impressive so we're, we're missing a, quite a, a large comp component of the charge infrastructure but yet we are still achieving 57 so once that once we get those ch overnight charges in place and the vehicle then can start the day on 100% as opposed to 26%, we're expecting good things for those figures. Um, we've got a consumption per mile um, and that's just give us some yeah, indication of what, what the vehicle's doing. So the EV mode is 2.4 kilowatt hour. There's, that's what it operates in, in hybrid mode. That's a combined figure, so when we um, when the geofencing is in operation to force the vehicle, the force of behaviour, change the behaviour of the vehicle to EV mode, diesel mode, that's, that's a figure represented there. And we use several um, Euro 4 with CRTs uh, to, as, as a benchmark, some benchmark data 
for that figure there. These, these, these consumption per mile figures do are fairly constant because the whole, the whole route is fixed. So the uh, geofencing operates at both ends of the route, for example, so it just makes that, that those figures are, are, are fairly um, static, shall we say. Um, talking uh, previously about driver and the, uh, the impact or effects of drivers and how the drivers are, are responding to this technology, this gives an idea of what each driver um, is, is achieving for the kilowatt when the, the vehicle was on charge, for example, how the vehicle is responding uh, for each driver in EV mode, and that's a hybrid figures there. And we've got some over for the month of September, we've got some overall figures here. So charge time is approximately seven, nine or ten minutes. Um, same for there. What we, we had some, some initial problems or difficult or challenges, I say, with Can in town. Uh, one, because it was sited very close to the DLR, DLR railway. So in terms of additional assurances for EMC, EMF, uh, stray fields, we had to demonstrate some uh, additional assurances that our technology would not interfere with the, the, tra the traffic in and the, li the, the lighting systems for the DLR. Um, charge infrastructure operational, uh, so it's basically the part of the, the, the whole trials, the electric vehicles, is um, how, how, how the whole thing's going to be costed and what, what sort of, uh, parts are different, what's been mentioned previously before, basically. Um, the opportunity charging during the day, do we, as I think Mark mentioned, do we, do we have um, overnight charging, do we have a mixture of overnight charging and on-street charging? So th that work has been done in TFL as we speak. Uh, to understand the power supplies and upgrades required. Um, smart charging, that's, that's got to be um, the way, I suppose, the next, the next um, level of, of um, um, trial, I should say, how, how that's going to work for us on larger charging structures like um, uh, Go Ahead. Um, space requirements on some of the, um, uh, the, the old uh, uh, garages, for example, we, we need to understand how we can fit additional uh, charge infrastructure in, whether it's going to be pantograph uh, gantries. Um, the protect, and the, Mark mentioned the overnight, or sorry, the uh, underground elliptic. Uh, regul regulatory framework. Part of the uh, our work is to is to look at the um, bus standards, TfL bus specification, to facilitate, accommodate all the additional equipment that's required to make uh, to develop EV technology, uh, whether it's conductive charging or pantograph. Planning consent has been a big issue for us uh, around the uh, Zeus project, the distribution and DNOs. Again, there's been lots of uh, dialogue with DNOs to. Uh, understand how they can be part of the the, the whole um, part of the whole structure of the the, uh, the regulatory framework. Um, and again, I mentioned the EMC EMF standards to meet rail standards requirements. So standardisation again, it's been mentioned previously. Developing bus the bus specification to uh, accommodate additional equipment for EV or conductive or pantograph <coughs> technology. Uh, common standards, and so all these parties we need to obviously need to work together and to to move, move the whole uh, EV um, uh, forward. Per proof, future proof and charge infrastructure again. So um, coming down to this point here about interoperability, there's no point in having different charging systems, different charging protocols, CCS or CHAdeMO or um, a BYD. Uh, communication protocol is about having to, the ability to, to move the buses around, um, as yeah, move the buses around to different operators as and when. And developing standard framework agreements, so this is all yeah, firmly put in place so we can m move the, the, the whole program forward. That's it. <laughs>